In this video, you are going to learn about the social model of health, which is also known as new public health, and understand how the social model has contributed to continued improvements in Australia's health status over time. In previous topics, we have learned that the leading causes of mortality in the early 1900s in Australia were from various infectious and parasitic diseases. Through changes to the physical environment, so old public health, and the discovery of vaccines, the biomedical model, these death rates drastically fell. As you can see in this graph, towards the end of the 1900s, particularly around the 1970s, new causes of both death and illness occurred. These were mainly lifestyle diseases such as cardiovascular disease and cancer. The rise in lifestyle diseases, which were a direct result from poor health behaviours such as smoking, alcohol use, poor diet and exercise, meant that there needed to be a shift towards education and prevention as currently there was just the old public health model which was focusing on those changes to the physical environment and the biomedical model, which we have learnt previously is around treating illness and disease once those symptoms are present. So this saw a gap in health in Australia and saw the introduction of the social model of health, which can also be referred to as the new public health model. So the social model focuses on population health. It focuses on prevention and education and takes into account the various socio-cultural factors that may impact um, individuals or populations' health and wellbeing. So let's take a look at a scenario to help describe this model and help for you to see the difference between this and then the biomedical approach to health. So an adult has a heart attack. They're rushed to hospital to undergo heart surgery to save their life. So this is an example of the biomedical model. However, this particular individual is considered obese, they have high cholesterol and they are a smoker. To prevent the heart attack from occurring in the first place or to prevent it from reoccurring, this individual could consult with a doctor or a healthcare provider with help around educating them around nutrition and how to improve their diet, as that's a risk factor for their heart attack. They could use the health star rating in supermarkets to help them select um, healthy foods, which is a health promotion tool, and they could utilize the Quit Victoria resources to help them quit smoking, as smoking is also a risk factor for a heart attack. So these examples are demonstrating health promotion, giving an individual the tools and skills to take control over their own health and well-being. So you need to know both the advantages and disadvantages of the social model of health. You need to be able to, rather than just identify, you need to be able to explain each advantage um, and ensure that you are providing enough information that you could use to discuss rather than just identify. So the first one is the social model assists in preventing diseases. So because it focuses so heavily on the socio-cultural factors that may impact health and wellbeing, many diseases could be prevented from occurring in the first place. Uh, the second advantage is that it is less expensive when compared to the biomedical approach. Even though some health promotion programs like Quit Victoria, for example, can be costly to implement, the prevention can mean, mean that more money is saved in the future from treating certain health conditions. So using Quit as an example, they've put a lot of money into preventing smoking. So hopefully there is not as many lung cancer or associated conditions being treated in hospital. So it is saving money. Um, it focuses on vulnerable and disadvantaged population groups. So those groups that we've looked at earlier in the course, like Indigenous, low socioeconomic status, and those living outside major cities in rural and remote areas. Um, it also focuses on education and that education can be then passed from generation to generation. So this information can be shared, which is then going to improve health and well-being in the future. The disadvantages, again, it is important to be able to have enough understanding of these to be able to apply them to a discussion and then when we look at our analysis questions a little bit later. So the first is that not every illness can be prevented. There are lots of medical conditions that have been caused by um, something that's gone wrong through birth or genetic conditions that are passed down in families that may not be able to be treated. Um, another is health promotion messages may be ignored. This, a perfect example of this is through our recent COVID-19 pandemic. There was lots of health advice coming out and um, some people chose to ignore that. So even though lots of the information was given to help protect us and to help keep us hygienic and safe and away from others, lots of people still chose to not follow that. So that just shows that there could be all the health promotion messages in the world, but it really is about an individual and their choice to follow that or not. 
it also doesn't promote advancements of medical technology because it's just focusing on those broader determinants of health and well-being. It doesn't promote technology and medical knowledge, which would be, I guess, an advantage of the biomedical model if we're starting to look at how to compare them. Part of this skill is understanding the five key principles of the social model of health. This can be made into the acronym AREAS if it helps you remember. So for this particular skill, a hot tip when studying for your SACRINA exam, so you know what to expect in terms of what question that you might be getting, you need to be able to explain each principle. So rather than just saying addresses the broader determinants of health, which would be identifying, you need to explain what that principle actually is. You need to be able to identify various principles in case studies or stimulus material that you may be given. And then the last of the skill is you need to be able to apply your understanding of each principle by giving evidence from stimulus material, which will most likely be a case study, as to why you believe a particular principle is evident. Now, we're going to practice that further in the presentation, but that is a really important and crucial part of this skill. So these are the five areas addresses the broader determinants of health. So this principle acknowledges that there are many factors that influence our health, such as gender, culture, race, SES and physical environment. So if you receive a case study that is focusing particularly on one of these factors, then that could be an example of this particular principle. R, so reduces social inequities. This principle aims to promote equity, so fairness, through providing equal opportunities for everyone with a main focus on disadvantaged groups. So if you see a case study that is focusing on improving the health of a disadvantaged group, let's say Indigenous population, then this could be an example of this principle. Empowers individuals and the community. This principle is all around providing education to people as well as developing their knowledge and skills. It helps people to take more control over their health. So if you get a case study that has examples of skill development, let's say a cooking class or developing knowledge through education, then this could be an example of this principle. Acts to enable access to healthcare. This principle is about addressing barriers to accessing healthcare, such as cultural and language barriers, as well as economic and geographical factors, as well as education levels. So again, if you receive a case study that has examples of making healthcare more accessible in some shape or form, then this could be an example of this principle. Lastly, involves intersectorial collaboration. This principle is about multiple groups or sectors, which are sectors of society coming together to achieve a common goal. So let's just say you receive a piece of information that has a government group, local community and health sector um, receiving, so multiple stakeholders or groups being involved like VicHealth working together with local charities and the Victoria Police, then this could be an example of principle. I find this one is quite easy to look for because you're really just looking for those multiple stakeholders who are coming together in whatever that project or initiative may be in terms of improving overall health and wellbeing. Before we move on to practicing this skill um, and we apply our knowledge, a good way to summarize your learning of this topic is developing like a Venn diagram or a comparison table between the biomedical approach to health and the social model of health. While they are both very different, they are both critical for the population to be able to achieve good health and well-being. It's good to just have that visual so that you can use that for your study with some keywords that help you understand the differences, maybe some similarities so that you can help distinguish the two when you're doing your SAC responses and you have that really key terminology to ensure that you're getting the most possible marks. So this document here is just to provide you with some examples of health promotion for those categories of disease that we have focused on. Again, it's not limited to these. Um, you might get different diseases or illnesses on an exam, but just to give you an idea and a starting point. So we've got the five categories of disease and then some particular examples um, that are going on in Australia that have been used to help prevent or educate the public around those particular conditions. So for example, we've got for CBD, smoking laws in public places, so through quit, um, and that's with the aim to help reduce CBD. Um, and then cancer as well. So SunSmart is a really good example because that's around education around skin safety um, to help reduce skin cancer. So these are just some examples so you can see health promotion in action. You might want to add some your own, of your own examples that you know as well that you can use to help support your answers. 
So here is a worked example of a typical question that you might get um, in terms of applying your understanding of the social model principles. So you've got a, a case study there with some information. This has just been adapted from a case study um, that was on a previous exam. I've just shortened it just for um, the purpose of showing your worked example. So here the question is identify two principles of the social model of health and explain how they are reflected in the Bush Classrooms project. Four marks. So you've got two marks for identifying each principle and then two marks for providing evidence. So you can see where I've colour coded it with my answer below. So I won't read through the case study, but I will go through my answer. So in the yellow, it's where I've identified the principle. So that is just listing. And then I need to give my evidence, which comes back to your knowledge and understanding of what that principle actually is. So the first one is empowers individuals and communities. The men's shed teaches men new skills such as woodworking and the restoration of old furniture. This is helping to provide them with education as well as allowing the men in the program to feel good about themselves to taking control of their own health because that principle was all around education, knowledge and taking control of your health. So you can see how I have um, made sure that answer is linking back to show my understanding of that principle and I've used specific examples in the case study. The next one involves intersectorial collaboration. The men's shed is funded by the federal government and run by local communities. This illustrates that multiple groups are working together towards the common goal of improving men's health. So again, this principle is around those multiple groups coming together towards a common goal. The common goal here is around improving men's health. So I've popped that into my response there. So there is other principles that you could have used. You're not limited, limited to these two, but it's all around your justification. And hopefully this shows how you, you really have to have that solid foundation knowledge of what each principle is to be able to apply it to giving that evidence in your case study. So this is another example of, um, I guess, this key skill and what it could look like in a question. Again, remember, this is just a very basic question. You'll most likely have some data or some stimulus material to link with, but just to show you the structure. So we've got explain how the social model of health could be used to help reduce mortality rates from cancer. So the elements that you need to include to achieve full marks and address this question um, are below. So you need to apply your understanding of an advantage of the social model, give a specific example that links to cancer, and that's what's in the question, and then link to mortality rates. Remember, this is question dependent. It's mortality here. It could be um, health and well-being, or it could be health status, or it might give you a particular term. But here we're looking at mortality. So let's go through our response. The social model of health focuses on preventing disease and illnesses. An example of this is through SunSmart's No Hat, No Play initiative that aims to help educate young Australians on the importance of sun safety. This can therefore help reduce the incidence of skin cancer and reduce mortality rates over time. So you can see that I've got that really clear example of what my advantage of the social model is. I've given a specific example that links to cancer and then I've linked it back to mortality at the end. So now it's time to practice some key skills in action. Um, remember with the case study practice and the social model principles, if you look on the Vic Health website, you can get a whole range of case studies that you can practice just for the purpose of this because they are quite lengthy to go on a slides presentation. Um, make sure that you are looking up and practicing that skill as well. So question one, outline one advantage and one disadvantage of the social model of health. So that is two marks. You just need to provide more than an identify and just a brief outline of an advantage and disadvantage. That should be quite simple. Question two, describe what is meant by new public health. So here you're looking for two points of information because it's two marks. And then explain how the social model could be used to help reduce the burden associated with cardiovascular disease. Four marks. So you've got two examples here following that same um, process that we looked, we went through on a previous slide.